maybe I can kick it off by just picking up on a point Robin made there, Milan. Uh, he spoke of the backer chick gold property of polymetals, of which I think is one of their most important assets, if not the most important. Um, and Robin spoke about the similarity with Voluna. Interestingly, Polymetal uh, has got the Voluna offtake. So what do does the big one and a half billion ounce a year Russian producer see in Voluna that the capital markets might have missed? Yeah, that's very interesting, uh, Robin and, and Simon. We've got an alliance with uh, Polymetal and we, we find them to be the, some of the smartest uh, people in the world when it comes to this sort of... We've just actually done about 800 uh, kilograms of testing of our material at the St. Petersburg uh, labs and the, the, the thoroughness of their reports and the geometallurgy as well as the metallurgical work is uh, is really, really good. And we obviously do our own as well. I mean, the similarity is very, very much that we have identified the gold, gold sulfur ratios to be very much interested and particularly for their new, in, in the Voluna Albany, and they see the scale of Voluna Albany being able to feed their new box blind. Uh, which which is now being commissioned on, on the east coast of Russia, and they're looking to us to expand production from this large inventory that we have, and then try and give them a long term supply beyond the current three years that we've signed up for. Thank you, Milan. Do you see that strategic offtake relationship developing in any other directions? Well, potentially, uh, given that WA is lacking modern refractory gold processing, uh, trying to assist get them to assist us in, in eventually developing a, a processing facility in the northern gold fields and potentially down in Kalgoorlie as well is part of those discussions. So yes, potentially. Thank you. Um, can I now ask a question of uh, all of the panelists and, and Robin, feel free to jump in here. Um, as an explorer, exploration company, what are the tools that you use to give your company an edge in terms of finding that big discovery? And maybe Milan, start with you, then move on to Merlin and Taj, thank you. All right, look, there's been a lot said about this already. Very simply, you know, from my experience, uh, the best place, to, and when we talk about gold, although copper is something I've done for years, the best place to find gold is where there's gold. Uh, and uh, so you need the right geology in the right location. And you also then need, need to have uh, the appropriate risk uh, appetite and the balance sheet to carry that through, that involves the right people, the, the, that's the board, the shareholders, and, and the people executing. If you don't have that combination, you can have the best geology in the world, but you're not gonna bring it to the market or, or, or develop it. And you need a luck and perseverance, obviously, uh, and a balance sheet where, as we know, there's been some fa famous comments made, you know, the markets can stay irrational for longer than you can stay solvent. So you need to be able to take your opportunity and, 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 and persevere. And, and then try and get the valuations at the right time in the cycle when, in fact, the market's giving you value for what you're doing. Thanks, Milan. Merlin? Yeah, <clears throat> thanks. Um, we've got kind of two things, really. Uh, one is the, the geological situation in Ecuador, is that the science that we're using is pretty um, basic. It's, it's pretty uh, standard exploration 101. We, we take samples, we do the mapping, we put trenches in the drill holes and we chase it up from there. So in, in, in that sense, we haven't got kind of a particular edge, but what we really do have is this unique kind of deal flow and information flow within Ecuador. Um, I mean, just, just by way of example, uh, some of our family have got a private uh, little um, processing plant, little treatment plant down in the Portobello mining district, which cold treats uh, material from our personal miners. And so, what happens is that we see rocks being brought in from the entire district as they've been um, cold treated through our process plant. And um, we've got a fantastic little prospecting team and they often go back out with the, when we see interesting rocks, they go back out with the artisanal miners and we get access to, to new areas. And so we're, we're seeing, we're having new projects brought to us. We're seeing new geology, which is, I don't think anybody else has got that. Uh, within Ecuador and remember that Ecuador is this kind of this almost virgin territory with this with this great geology so I think that's a real edge. Taj, thank you Melo. Yeah there's, there's a few uh, kind of uh, a few items that uh, that I think give us an edge one is Mexico team we've, we've done it we put uh, you know 30,000 ton per day open pit mine into operation in 2011 
Um, we've been together, working together in Mexico again, like I said, me, myself, 10 years, but the team is, yeah, 20, 30 years. Like a lot of our top guys, as Merlin had said, uh, with Salazar, our team is very Mexico, Mexico centric. Uh, uh, so also being close with the local and state government and, and Mexico through and through is a mining country. Um, and they get it. it's in their DNA. They've been mining for for centuries, um, that that's very important. So our, our we have a we have very good connections uh, at the government level, um, but also even even locally in terms of getting surface access, etc. And then a few other key points is it's all ties back to location. But we're in a major mining belt. Like I said, there's there's an abundance of mines around uh, near and around us. Um, and then power, water. I talked about these when I talked about my slide, but those are all those are all around us. And a big thing for exploration specific, uh, you know, to the to the discussion we're having now is is the ability to uh, um, explore in Mexico is pretty standard. It's the drilling costs are very cheap, uh, so you are mapping, sampling, um, and then start drilling right away because the the cost per meter are, are, are very cheap uh, worldwide. And then specific again to us, we've got the large land package, which I think is very important to find some new discoveries and then the cash balance brings down the financing risk and the, and the, and the execution risk. So there's quite, there's quite a few factors, but um, you know they uh, share a lot of similarities as to what the other panelists have, have talked about. Thanks, Taji. Um, so Robin, I'm gonna read out a question here, which comes from Anthony Maliewski, uh, a, a bit of uh, shameless promotion, self-promotion, which is fantastic. Anthony asks, have you looked at any of the AI technologies that companies like Minerva or Gold Source have touted the idea that using the data combined with the new AI techniques will lead to large new discoveries. Any views, Robert, maybe you can take that. We're actually doing some, uh, if you like, machine learning with poor free data sets at the moment. We've got students working on that very topic. Um, and I can relate that back to what the guys have just been saying as, as well. I mean, AI is only gonna work in data rich jurisdictions. So, Western Australia is great because you have a great geological survey, you've got the rules which mean that people have to log their data. Without the data, the data has to have saturation, it has to have good spatial continuity to work. Where it's really good is within ore bodies with actual uh, assay data, for example, and rock properties data. So it will be another powerful tool. But, and this is not a negative but, it's all about layering up your data. That's essentially what the AI allows you to do. And at the moment, we've still got plenty of very good um, geologists kicking around who can do that just as well as in AI currently. So we have to, we have to embrace these technologies going forward and they are incredibly useful, but be aware of what the data density is in space. And I think you can never, and it's gonna go back to what the guys were saying previously, is um, the team is always really important. You've got to have those geologists in place who have experience of particular terrains, a team that's imaginative, that is able to consider old areas, if you like, with a new set of eyes. And you've got to also remember is that geologists are inductively reasoning beasts, yeah? They'll try something and then try and reflect on what they found and how they're going to move forward with that model. And I think that's really important. If you see a model being fixed, I kind of be a bit wary of that. Um, and I think we're, you know, going back to the AI thing is we have to make more use of the diamond drill core that we drill. It's expensive stuff and we don't always make the best use of it in terms of mineralogy, which is cost peanuts in comparison to actually doing the drill drilling itself the chemistry and following what the course says <laughs>